Hello there, welcome back to One in a Million Chess. In today's video, I will explain an interesting pawn sacrifice in the main line of the Torre attack, and I will do it by analyzing a game played by Daniel Duboff, this Russian talented grandmaster who is known for his enterprising playing style, gives us an interesting lesson on how to handle the initiative. His game is against Anton Tildor and is played in a title Tuesday. As I said before, even when those are blitz games, they are so strong that they, they have usually a high standard. They are very precise. Even when this is only a five minute game, we are going to learn a lot. So without further ado, let's jump into the Bob's game. D4, knight f6, knight f3, e6, and bishop d5. We are arriving to the Torre attack. In case you haven't seen the introductory video of the Torre attack, I highly recommend you do it. There I explain some of the basic ideas and I do it showing a very nice game um, of the pioneer himself, Mr. Carlos Torre. After c5, we reach the main line. Now, usually, white answers with e3, keeping the structure, keeping the, the d4 pawn defended. But the trendy pawn sacrifice um, d5 is what is more interesting nowadays, is the line that is giving black the most headaches in this line. It's, okay, black is under some pressure after this. White's intention is to gain a space, for example, let, let's say, let's imagine our opponent plays d6, we continue with knight c3, bishop e7, e4, we're gaining th this space, and after castle we play bishop f4, because now the, the threat, knight takes d5, is serious. It wasn't as serious before, because after knight takes, he takes, bishop takes g5, and we have this check, forcing king f8, now I guess d takes e6, bishop takes e6, and we recover our pawn in a fantastic position. We have uh, stopped uh, black from castling, and we have a nice initiative. In the game, Theodore played e takes d5, and Dubov continued with knight c3, d4, and bishop takes f6, queen takes f6, knight d5. The queen has to move and has to control c7. The game continues with queen c6, also queen d8 and queen c6 can be, you know, queen d6 can be, can be played, and every case we are going to try to open the position to use our fantastic knights after queen c6, e4, protecting the knight, d takes e3, and here Dubov played bishop b5. He doesn't care about e takes f2, of course, because in that case the rook would come, and he is uh, giving the, the bishop because of the fork. Queen c7, knight c7 and winning the queen. So the game continues with queen d6, castle, bishop e7, and rook e1. Now the pressure is increasing. His opponent castle, rook takes e3, bishop d8. He played knight e5. What I, wa what I found interesting is that perhaps bishop d3 was even stronger. Now the, the knight can be taken because of, of course, because of bishop h7 and Knight c6, a normal developing move, would be answered with this fantastic move, attacking the rook, and after bishop takes, bishop takes h5, h7, and queen takes d6, winning the queen. Uh, okay, but Duval played knight e5, he's playing an active, uh, trusting in his active pieces, knight c6, knight c4, queen g6, the black queen is too exposed. Rook g3, rook h6, rook h3, queen g6, and now 
it's a, an important moment. I, I suggest you, if you want to train your decision t making, to stop the video and try to find the move. Here, the ball took advantage of the position of the queen and that the rook is already pressing h7. So he played knight c e3, trying to play bishop d3. And okay, he keeps chasing the queen all over the world. d6, bishop h3, uh, forcing f5. Of course, the queen can't move because we would simply play bishop takes h3, h7, win in the game. f5, knight f4, and now the bishop attacks the king by this diagonal. King h8, and queen takes d6. Now, knight e7. Things are getting dangerous because I'm not just threatening here. In uh, case of bishop e7, for example, knight g6 would be winning. Take, take, and white wins the queen. Also, in case of rook f6, uh, six, queen d, d5 is also really annoying. The game continued with knight e7. Oh, sorry, knight e7. Rook d1, he brings the last piece to the game, and this, this move decides the game. b5, and he just takes. Queen takes d8. Of course, the, the queen can't be taken. Bishop a6. And another surprise. Queen takes e7. For the second time, the queen can't be taken. He takes on f4. Of course, in case of queen takes e7, knight g6, checkmate, and after taking on f4, he simply resigns. Um, Dubov is winning with almost every move, but with rook d7, the game would be decided right away. Another interesting example of this line is instead of, of k okay, after e takes d5, we can also play e3 with the intention of playing knight c3. But okay, knight c3 is really entertaining and gives black plenty of practical problems. d4, bishop takes f6, queen takes f6, knight d5. And I have seen another interesting miniature, almost miniature, and played in chess.com again. Timofeev against Nestorovich in 2022. He played queen d8. And again, e3, e takes e3, queen e2. This time, we can even try to castle on the queen side. d6, queen takes e3, bishop e6, and now knight g5. Queen d7, and knight f4. All of a sudden, this, this point is really lost. I mean, the, the, the black uh, development is not enough to cope with these threats. So knight c6, knight takes e6, d takes e6, and knight takes e6. Avoiding long castle and threatening every sort of attack. So he plays bishop e7 and bishop c4, giving some support to the knight. He continues with knight e5, and bishop b5. Again, we see this trick. Knight ta queen takes is simply answered by mm, knight c7, knight c6, and long castle. Black's position is hopeless. His problem is the king in the center, and this knight stops, him, stops it from castling. So he decides to play e6, bishop c4. The knight comes back to e5, bishop d5, g5. Okay, this white is trying to play a four. With this move, black tries to keep the knight on an e5, blocking the, the line. Rook h e1, rook queen a4, king b1, king d7, knight takes e5, and bishop b3, and Nestorovich resigned. So the idea is really powerful. Once we play d5, Black has to be really careful on what he's do doing. 
Okay, c5, d5, queen a5 must be critical. Against it, white can answer both by c3, knight takes, and e4, gaining some compensation for the sacrifice pawn. Or, with the most interesting, in my opinion, bishop d2, queen b6, c4, this pawn is also is hanging, but I mean, after knight c3, rook b1, and queen b knight b5, black is not doing so well. So it's more normal to take the central pawn by e takes d5, c takes d5, knight takes d5, e4. Now the knight has got a lot of squares, but I mean, this one is the best. I see it will regroup to e6 and won't be attacked again. For example, the knight here will be attacked immediately. So knight c7 is the most normal. Knight c3, bishop e7, bishop c4, castle, castle. And this might be the critical position for the, the whole line. I mean, black's uh, coordination is a bit strange, a bit weird. While our coordination is really natural, we have the central pawn to gain space. And I don't know, I think this is an interesting one. I mean, if you play d6, the queen is also a bit exposed, you know, it's almost trapped. So I think white has got some nice counterplay. And this is it. The idea is not new. We know this idea from the past when we played e3 and black answered with b6 d5 was really a strong move was played by Jusupov by Petrosian uh, and this was considered something really good but the problem was that e takes d4 c takes d c, no sorry c takes d4 e takes d4 and b6 then d5 is not as good and this is why not playing b6 right away is the right way to play for black so now black, white comes up with this idea and i think it's really promising hope you like the idea i definitely will give it a try in my own games i have played it on blitz already but not in tournament so okay i'm committing to play it in a slower time controls as well see you next time